I think there are fundamentally two ways of acquiring knowledge and skills. One is through building a foundation or structure beforehand and then adding knowledge to that structure. The other one is just jumping right in without any structure and learning as you go. And I think it's fairly obvious that you can maximize your learning potential by choosing the way that works for you. And please remember to hit the subscribe and like button, it really helps the channel. Having gone through many years of learning in schools and universities, and also having learned a bunch of other things through other channels or entirely on my own, I am gradually starting to understand what the right way of learning for me is, and how I could potentially accelerate the process of learning by understanding that not everybody learns the same way and that the ways that work for me may not necessarily work for others and vice versa. But first a caveat, I'm making here a distinction between two opposite ways of learning. And this distinction is necessarily polarized, but the poles in reality are not always that clearly apart. There may be a range between them, and it's also possible that you would move back and forth on the scale, depending on the subject you're learning, the stage of life you're at, the teachers and resources you have access to, or perhaps even the mood you're in. Still having said that, I personally feel this distinction quite strongly, and it has been an important realization for me to understand that even though we're all typically taught the same way, we do not actually learn the same way and it would be far more efficient if everybody learned the way that suits them. Okay, from where I stand, it seems to me that there are fundamentally two different kinds of learners. One is those who learn through structure, and two, those who learn through immersion. And I'm really not trying to advocate any one of these over the other. I think they're both valid ways, and I know people, colleagues, and students who have managed to succeed and get ahead in life by relying on either of these two methods. So the question is not which of these two methods is the best, but which of them suits you personally the best. So let's look at each of them separately. The structured way is a method in which students acquire new knowledge through first building an overall structure or framework and understanding the most important rules of the subject, and then use this structure or framework to place everything else they learn on. They start with a skeleton, building it up carefully, and then add everything else onto it in a series of further steps. They work from the inside towards the outside, using a sort of top-down approach. It is a bit like building a house. You lay down the foundations, and then you place one row of bricks atop of the other, all the way up to the roof. Put in the window frames, install the wiring system, etc. In this approach, it makes no sense to try to put up the roof first, because you would need the walls to hold it. And the advantage of this method is that your knowledge is on solid grounds. You have mastered the basics well, which means that it's relatively easy to add new bits of information, which will inevitably fall into place. And if you keep learning, you will be able to reach a very high level of proficiency, even mastery. And you will probably be very good at teaching others using the same method. The downside is that it takes quite a bit of time to get to the point where you and others feel that you actually know something about the subject, because you've spent so much time building up the structure which is not even visible from the outside. As a result, it is also quite easy to give up and quit, because it takes quite a lot of discipline to get through that initial period when you do not have visible results yet. Also, skeletons and structures can be different, and when you're at the beginning and only starting out, it's very difficult to see which is the right one. So it is crucial to work with a good teacher or a good book, which will tell you what the right structure is and help you choose the best option for you. But when you're just starting out, you do not know who the right teacher might be, or as in middle school, you do not have a choice who to study with. Quite often you would be learning with mediocre teachers and random books, and this makes the whole process even less fun and much more cumbersome. In any case, this way of learning is enforced in structured learning environments, such as schools and universities. Official teaching models and curricula are all based on this model. The teacher lays down the foundation by thoroughly explaining the rules and providing the necessary background. The problem is that although this is how we are all expected to learn, this method is not best for everyone. I don't know what the statistical breakdown of each category is, but it's certain that there are quite a lot of people in each group. And it goes without saying that you learn better and quicker if you learn the way that works for you. 
Conversely, if you're being forced to learn in a way that does not really work for you, you're far less efficient. You need to develop coping mechanisms and maybe even labeled as having a learning disability. In other words, while structured learning is great, it is only great for those who are good at learning this way. For others, it may be a constant struggle. And the second method is the immersion method. This is essentially the unstructured method, but I did not want to give it a negative name because that would imply that this is something you don't do rather than something you do do. So there are those learners who learn best by not relying on a pre-built structure, but by finding random access points and just going for it. They work their way through parts of the topic that seems more interesting or intriguing. These learners work from the outside towards the inside, kind of like a bottom-up approach. It is a bit like not trying to build a house, but draw one because you don't draw a house by first drawing the foundation and then the inside structure, gradually moving upwards until you reach the roof and the chimney. Instead, you draw it in any which way you want. You can still go first for the general outline and zoom into smaller things from there, but you can also begin to draw it from the most interesting part, the part you're interested in or the part you want to focus on. The advantage of the immersion method is that it's more fun to learn this way because you begin to use what you learn immediately. You don't have to go through a longer period of working hard and not having any fun. Instead, you can enjoy the fruits of your learning from the very start. That is if you're comfortable with not having an overall structured view of the whole thing. So this kind of learning is more fun and as a result does not need much discipline because you don't need to force yourself to endure the grind. You're propelled by the fun element in it. The disadvantage is, of course, that often your knowledge is patchier and more haphazard. There might be entire areas you're not really familiar with, things you've never heard of, and this at times can lead to embarrassing situations. Also, if you learn best like this, you're less likely to succeed in traditional structured learning environments, such as schools. It is almost as if you had to learn on the side, as a hobby or side hustle, and in the meantime you continue struggling in school pretending to be learning like everyone else. But ultimately, as you learn enough, you're able to erect your own structure, which can be just as solid and reliable, although not necessarily the same, as the one taught in school. For example, if we take language learning, the structured method would be the one that advocates learning the grammatical rules of the language and a sufficient amount of vocabulary before you even try to talk to someone. By contrast, the immersion method would focus on trying to talk and read, with much less focus on the grammar, taking notes of grammatical points only as they come up. I now realize that I belong to the second group for whom learning in a structured way is actually quite difficult, simply because I feel that the knowledge I learn is completely abstract and devoid of context, and I always feel that I need the context to understand what's going on. Recently, I have been toying with the idea that this distinction maybe depends on what you're used to, and it may be possible to retrain yourself to move from one camp to the other. Who knows, maybe it is the case. Let me know what you think by writing in the comment section below. Okay, these are my ideas on the two different ways of learning. Let me know if you had a similar experience with learning the wrong way, or realizing that you may be better off learning in another way. I hope this was useful, thank you for watching and see you next time.